All right, this is Darkwing Duck for the Game Boy. This is one of my favorite games. It opens up with this cute little uh, intro that's kind of like the cartoon show. As a fan of the cartoon show, this was really cool to watch. It's a, I mean, it's especially impressive for a, a game from the early 90s for a little Game Boy. We didn't, we didn't get a lot of full motion video on the console. So this game was uh, originally released for the NES in 1992. It was developed on the NES by Capcom. It was then ported to the Game Boy the next year in 1993 by the Japanese company Make Software. Make Software also did the uh, excellent port of DuckTales 2 to the Game Boy. So here... Um, <laughs> Launchpad McQuack asks you, asks you which uh, stage you want to go to. This game, in my opinion, really feels like a spiritual successor to Mega Man. Like, it could be a Mega Man game. There's a lot of similarities with it. So you start by choosing, you know, which boss you want to go fight. And you play through a level and get to the boss at the end. Every stage starts with Darkwing Duck doing his little animation and catchphrase from the show. And right from the beginning of the level, you get... Uh, you get an introduction. You get to see the really good level design. So you're introduced to this enemy that's way up on top. He's just looking around for uh, for the player, and uh, you get to see him walking back and forth. And he doesn't drop down until after you get close. So you learn that you learn that uh, these enemies, you know, they don't just come after you. They wait until they can see you. So you can actually use that to your uh, benefit while playing through the game. You can try to avoid enemies. Uh, this first stage is peppered with these... What do they call them? These hanging platforms that uh, are... Like the very first ones in the stage are just out of reach from your jump. So, you know, you start playing with the controls and you jump and almost immediately you'll touch one of the undersides of them. And, uh, you know, stick to the bottom of it, which teaches the player that you can grab onto ledges, you can jump off them, you can jump up on top of them. So these hanging hooks here, most of the controls in this level, I'm sorry, most of the controls in this game are really tight, really nice. The game just feels really good to control, and there's a lot of controls. My only complaint is that the, uh, the pulleys here, anything you have to hang from can be a little sticky a little tricky to uh, get the hang of at times, and it will occasionally cause a death that feels unfair. But other than that, yeah, the controls are outstanding in this game. <laughs> I mentioned this was like Mega Man. Here's your first uh, Hammer Joe. So the game includes, uh, unlike Mega Man, it has uh, Darkwing Duck has this uh, cape cape mechanic. If you press the up arrow. You'll pull your cape up in front of your beak, which will protect yourself from projectiles. All right, we're coming up on the first boss, who is Quacker Jack. All the bosses in this game are from the cartoon show, which is a lot of fun. So, oh, the bosses in this game are so clever. They all have their own little gimmicks. They all feel really unique. So Quacker Jack, he doesn't even attack you like directly. He just runs back and forth while his little, while his little uh, banana friend will th launch banana peels down at you. And, you know, there's no, there's no artificial intelligence here. He's just uh, he walks back and forth, and when he's directly over your head, he'll drop a banana peel. But it really gives it a good feeling of even though there's no like there's no randomness to the battle. It's a fun little battle, and all the bosses are like this. The level ends, you get a little cutscene, which, you know, is cool. It feels like the end of an episode, like from a cartoon show. And then you get to select the next stage. I love games that do this, especially Game Boy games, where you get to choose which level you're going to play next. Because, you know, there's no battery backup. 
So every time you turn it on, you don't have to get bored playing the same same level over and over again. Yes, a button. Noba button. Alright, next stage, Moriarty. So Oh, every every stage has this uh, has their own kind of feeling to the enemies. This stage <laughs> This stage apparently has guys hiding in the ground. These henchmen, like flying henchmen and guys fly hiding in the ground henchmen. Oh these stupid banana peels. I hate the banana peels. They can be really hard to avoid at times. <laughs> so even though, yeah, so I mentioned this game's like Mega Man. There are you don't get a you don't get a new weapon when uh, when you beat the boss, but instead there's three different types of special weapons you can collect throughout the levels. And, you know, you just if you see one and it's the weapon you want, then you collect it and you get that weapon. You can only hold one one type at a time. Well, there's something that's kind of annoying. This is one of those games where you can only move up and down in one direction. So, you know, as you're traveling up a building, as soon as the floor disappears off the bottom of the screen, it no longer exists. So if you slip and fall, like, you don't just go back down on the floor you were just on top of. Well, <laughs> you'll actually, you'll just die. I love this. This is super, the way this, uh, this screen is uh, laid out. Really looks like a Mega Man game. It's classic Mega Man level design. Oh, so this is cute. See, you jump up and down on this air pump to launch a balloon in the air and then you ride it across. There's so many clever, th like almost every stage has has little unique things like this. And they really didn't have to do this, but the level designers and the developers put in all these fun, fun things to make, uh, you know, really spice up the levels. I love this enemy, the turtles. They just walk back and forth looking angry until you get close to them and they're allergic to ducks. So when you get close to them, you know, they start sneezing and sneeze their shells off, which can hurt you. It's kind of clever. It's, you know, just another Mega Man Hammer Joe, except this one walks around a little bit. There's a lot of Hammer Joes in this game. Ooh. Oh my gosh, and after he sneezes his shell off, he starts shaking because he's cold. There's so many little details. All right, so Wolf Duck. <laughs> he's this scrawny little guy that only turns into a wolf when the moon is out. So you can actually see the clouds in the background covering up the moon and revealing the moon. And as it, as it, as, you know, it gets covered and uncovered, Wolf Duck will change. And, uh, the, yeah, you can only hurt him when he's in scrawny mode. Kind of a fun little fight, not too hard. Job well done. Where should we go now, DW? Go to the sewers. <laughs> the liquidator in the show had this weird, uh, what was he? He spoke like a, like a radio host or a TV, TV host announcer? Or a game show host. Ooh, this all's dark in the sewer. And once again, there's so many details in the background. You got the bricks, the pipes. <laughs> and chicken eggs? I'm not sure why chicken eggs will uh, will fall from the uh, the top of the sewer in this game, but anyway, they kind of hatch and then start running after you. So this is one of the first time I think this is the first first area in the game where you get to use one of the special items. One of the three weapons you can get is the arrows. 
the arrow gas, AG, and it actually creates an arrow that can stick to the stick to a wall, and you can use it as a platform. This is like a special little area that I like to do. It's fun trying to maneuver the different platforms. I mentioned they can be kind of sticky and hard to control, and yeah, I got kind of wrecked here. <laughs> Yeah, because of the level design, there's almost no time. There's almost no times where uh, an enemy will jump out and get you before you have a chance to like see the enemy and see what he does. Like this, oh, this is perfect. You see, introduced to this new enemy who smashes the ceiling and causes little pieces of bricks to fall down, and so you get to learn about him before uh, before you actually have to deal with him. That little alligator that comes afterwards—he's just a jerk. Yes, got the one up. No problem. Problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, still got it. So I mentioned this game isn't too hard. Uh, you know, when I was a kid and I first first started playing it, I did struggle with it. You know, it's hard, especially some of the later levels. Uh, there are. So you start by selecting from one out of you start by playing through the first three levels. It's then followed up by another three levels, and then the final boss level. Uh, it took a while before I kind of got used to it and was able to beat the game, but now it's just it's just fun to play through. I play through this game a lot. So this is a clever area that's in the sewer that's uh, all dark until you turn on the lights and you can see the enemies. Oh, thank goodness you can see the pits though. I hate it when dark areas where you can't even see the where the like there's no more floor. It's so annoying. Alright, here I'm gonna get the arrow gas. I'm sorry, not the arrow gas, the lightning gas. Gas gun. <laughs> I think the show is kinda weird. So in the TV show, Darkwing Duck has a gas gun, and I think it only shoots different types of gas canisters, and I'm assuming Disney made that choice because they wanted a superhero with a gun, but not like shooting bullets because it's a kid's show. So whatever, he shoots a gas gun. So these lightning bullets are gas lightning, I guess, and arrow, arrow, arrows made out of gas. I don't really get it. It doesn't make. It doesn't matter. <laughs> So that's why, you know, every bullet shot, when it hits a wall, has a little poof of, a uh, little cloud poof there. Oh, I hate these guys. They're so hard. And fast. Ah, oh, more cool platforming. It's a lot of fun. I like these, uh, challenges. Alright, time for the Liquidator boss battle. He just crawls around in the, the water below and launches his fish up at you. I just like to stay up on top and hit him with the uh, diagonal shots here. So yeah, this battle... So what do we have for random... random... Uh, randomness in this battle? So anytime he stops and uh, calls his minions there, it can be either the fish that just shoot straight up and down, or it can be these uh, sand dollar things. That uh, so that that's a piece of randomness, some randomness there. But then once uh, once the sand dollar things pop up, they just uh, they just uh, go on a course directly at you. Ah, 
Oh, so this is the next three levels. The second half of the game. Where should we go now, DW? Ah, Moliarity. <laughs> what a great pun. So, he's kind of like the, uh, what is it, the Sherlock Holmes, arch nemesis, Moriarty, but he's a mole. Haha. -ha. I really appreciate, so this game, Darkwing Duck, he often, you know, in the TV show, he'll come out at night. And I appreciate that this game did, most of the nighttime backgrounds are actually just dark gray instead of pitch black. And so it, uh, it's kind of a, even though it takes place at night, it's kind of a bright, a bright night. Looks nice and bright and cartoony. <laughs> so the theme for this stage, Moriarty, Moliarty, sorry, is a kind of a tinkerer scientist guy. Uses machines. And so the theme for this stage is mechanical dogs, uh, mechanical contraptions, and basketball playing mice. <laughs> it certainly mixes things up. Oh, and once again, you know, it's just another uh, Mega Man style uh, Hammer Joe. Ah, this stage has a lot of vertical, vertical movement. In Darkwing Duck, when you jump up, he just grabs onto the onto the platforms automatically. You don't have to push a button or anything. That's nice. A little bonus section here, get a Darkwing Doll one up. So as you can see, all the uh, there's a ton of animation in this game. Oh, I love that his <laughs> this enemy's uh, weak point is flashing on the top of his head. It's kind of cool. You have to jump up and hit him in his weak point. Otherwise, he just ducks under your bullets. So yeah, the animations are really good. We've got uh, Darkwing walking with his cape flowing behind him. All of the enemies have uh, many many frames of animation. Including special animations like, you know, the turtle shivering when he's cold without his shell. This whole sneezing animation. A lot of attention to detail. Additionally, I really appreciate the, uh, the, the graphics in regards to it being a port. So there's a lot of games reported to the Game Boy uh, from both the NES and the Super NES. Many times those ports were just... Uh, Many times those ports were just, like, they just took the, gra the original graphics and kind of scaled them down and, I don't know, in my opinion, really didn't scale them, or really didn't touch them up at all, but not in this game. This game, there's such wonderful attention to detail. Like Darkwing, I mean, you can see his, he's got four buttons. The cartoon character has four buttons on his, on his uh, superhero coat there. And, you know, you can see all four buttons on the tiny Game Boy screen very clearly. <laughs> oh, this is a really cool boss fight. So, <laughs> Moliarty, well, he just runs and around. What is it? it he doesn't like directly attack you usually at least instead he made these machines that will launch fireballs at you and so you can try to ignore them but you know the fireballs are nasty they just keep uh, firing directly at you and he Moliarty will Oh, so and if you just if you try to ignore the fireballs and attack attack the enemy directly, he he just he really quickly uh, launches a wrench at you and then you know runs away to the other side of the the other half of the the room. And so it's really hard to attack him if you just try to get him directly. So the, the little strategy is you break his machines. Oh, he throws a hammer. It looks like 
So you, what you do is you shoot the uh, flashing points on his machines. Oh, they even show you when it starts the stage. It's broken. And he runs over and fixes it. So it kind of teaches the player that, oh, these can be broken. So if you shoot them in their flashing point, he runs over to fix the machine, at which point he's vulnerable. He just stands there while he's fixing it, and that's when you hit him. It's a really cool battle. Apparently it's also hard, because I kept getting wrecked. <laughs> Look at smug Darkwing, wiggling his eyebrows, Dr. Wily style. So that's a fun bell. Yeah, there is zero randomness in that battle. Moliarity will just, uh, you know, run back and forth until you break one of the machines, and the machines will shoot uh, fireballs directly at the player. So I didn't talk about the music yet. I really like the music in this game. It all has a uh, has a similar theme. Like a, uh, like a superhero, jazzy, noir, not noir, jazzy superhero theme to it. All original music for the game, except for the, you know, the theme song. I think it's, uh, all seven stages have, uh, unique music. Stage one. The first stage I played is uh, one of my favorites, maybe just because I've heard it so many times. The final stage music is also one of my favorites. So this level is pretty tricky. There's a lot of... Uh, if you don't take out these birds right away, uh, they'll kind of fly around and be annoying. And these <laughs> Flying plant heads? Flower head things? Vines? Oh, Pumba! No, Pumba, no! Yeah, these nasty looking teethy plant things are, uh, they always freaked me out. Ah, oh, got some cool, uh, waterfall. What's that effect called? Color cycling? To make the waterfall effect? If there's a waterfall in a video game, you know there's going to be log platforms. So, so far in this level, the theme has been birds, more birds, and plants. So this is the stage for, uh, what's his name? Plant guy. Plant man. I don't remember his name. Bushroot. Who's a plant-based villain. I think the other <laughs> the other enemy type in this game is a knight, like you know, sword and shield knight. Oh, this is kind of funky. So, by killing that enemy and seeing the item drop, you actually see it fall off the screen, which lets the players know that that waterfall is covering a like a hidden pit. So if you are if you notice that and jump over it, you'll find this little secret area and hidden one up on the right here and uh you know refill your life and then you can go back and go back down the way the game intends you to go oh yeah i don't really get this knight so you shoot off their helmet and i don't know maybe it was easier to see what was going on in the uh in the nes version i love these inflatable birds these are more birds this is really a bird level oh this kind of no uh, yeah Oh, the final boss. Yeah, these inflatable birds, you hit them and they kind of deflate, comically deflate, like uh, cartoon cartoon balloons. So Bushroot, he uh, bounces back and forth before you hit him. I think if you just hit him enough, he uh, pops up into the air and summons one of his plants to start launching seeds at you. Ah, oh, he's so spindly. He looks just like the, uh, just like the character in the cartoon show. Oh. And using just two colors, the backgrounds are made with 
mostly two colors. There's a little bit of, so there's black, dark gray, and a little bit of light gray in the backgrounds. And you, they, you know, they draw the, uh, the forest leaves at the top, the canopy. They got the tree trunks with, you know, bark on them and all the plants in the, at the bottom. And they keep all the characters and the foreground stuff to be only the lighter three colors, mostly. Makes it really easy to see the characters and the places you can jump on. The only thing better than you know, big, clear, well-drawn graphics is big, clear, well-drawn graphics with high contrast. Ah, uh, Megavolt was my favorite and my favorite uh, villain, super villain from Darkwing Duck. I believe he was voiced by Homer Simpson. <laughs> I think I, oh, I saved this, this level for last because they have the, my least favorite enemies. So I guess Megavolt is hiding out in a warehouse. And the theme for his level is uh, genies in a magic lamp. I have no idea, but yeah. <laughs> But no, the the, uh, the villain there, Megavolt, he's got a, uh, <laughs> what does he do? He wears a, he has a helmet with like an electrical outlet plug on his head. And uh, he wears a battery on his back. He's just a fun, crazy looking villain. Crazy acting too. This is where those stupid... Yep, there he is. Stupid genies. I will grant you three wishes. Death. Death. And death. I really like this platforming. I like it's fun. It looks kind of... Uh, I don't know, intimidating, but it's, you know, pretty simple. As long as you don't get overwhelmed. So I think, I was, oh my gosh, and then the stupid flying carpets. Oh, so annoying. And as soon as you run away from them, they just come back. They just spawn again. So I think I successfully killed all these, you know, shot all these lamps before they're able to shoot. These, if you don't kill them fast enough, they shoot this, yeah, the stupid fireballs right at you. Oh, come on, how are you supposed to avoid that? Ugh. Oh yeah, time for the boss battle. So Megavolt here will, uh, so he starts off by Starting an electrical like uh, current bouncing back and forth on the floor. So generally you have to stay off the floor. You can make it down there, you just gotta dodge that thing. And then he just stays, he just walks back and forth and uh, launches more electric volts at you. It's a great battle. <laughs> Does he point to where he shoots? <laughs> cool. Yeah, I love him. Let's see, what are their similarities? So, you know, now that we beat the uh, the six levels and the six bosses, it unlocks the Wily level, or, you know, the last level. We finally located the hideout of Steelbeak. He is on foul floating fortress. Let's get dangerous. Do you want to go there? Yes, a button. Nova button.
All right, Fowl's Floating Fortress. I'm sure this, uh, I'm sure the villains thought of a, uh... oh, I love this song. This is one of my favorite songs in the game. I'm sure the uh, villains there you know, thought of uh, the name of the organization and then found out that it coincidentally spelled out foul. Totally coincidental. So even though this is the last level in the game, they still introduce some fun new enemies. I never quite understood these uh, these guys with the cannons. They kind of looked like orchestra conducting tigers to me. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, conduct that cannon. Maybe they're playing the 1812 Overture. Hmm. I guess technically it can't be a true Mega Man game if you can duck. I've never tried blocking the cannonballs with my cape. I assume, uh, I assume that's not a, not a thing. Ooh, don't go down. <laughs> All right, so this is a new end. I'm sorry. Fun little tricky platforming section. Little teeny tiny action puzzles. I guess another drawback is uh, with all the stuff going on in this game, there are times, including right in the first level, where there's so much going on in the screen that it does cause some slowdown. Uh, it's not that much. I think these are rabbits hiding in barrels that pop out. They've never successfully hurt me, ever. You just shoot and they die, whatever. So this guy's kind of weird. I, I call him the Terminator. <laughs> it's like a, I don't know, he's like a gorilla with a machine gun and sunglasses. And, uh... <laughs> As you, when you kill him, like his outsides fall, like burn up, and he turn he turns into the, the Terminator robot. Oh, I like he's got like a mohawk too, and just starts walking at you menacingly. Unfortunately, he's stupid and will just walk in a straight line. Uh, if you continue to shoot him as fast as possible, he continues to break down, and turn into these really obnoxious like bouncing little I don't know what frog, not frogs, but you know like little mechanical bouncing things. He's like, he's the enemy that keeps on giving. Holy moly. He's easy to deal with when he's just a slow walking robot. Alright, some more little platforming. More random rabbits and barrels. Hey, I made it. Mega toe. Got the classic Mega Man Mega Toe. You can stand on the edge of a precipice with nothing but your big toe. Wow. Full three frames of animation. It's really nice. <laughs> this is a cool little take on the enemy. What are you gonna do, buddy? All right, and this is the final boss. health. The final boss isn't too hard. Just kind of nice little uh, climactic battle between uh, 
Steel Beak and Darkwing Duck. You just break him out of his uh, his little hideout up there and hit him when he comes out. And that's pretty much it for Darkwing Duck. Yeah, so as I was saying, really good, really good clear graphics with lots of animation, large sprites that are easily, you know, they look really good like the the characters in the show. Good sound effects, great music, all jazzy, great jazzy music. Really good challenge. Like, it's a challenge to get to the end, but nothing frustratingly hard. Yeah, and if you like Mega Man games, I highly recommend this. Either the Game Boy version or the NES version are both outstanding. The NES version is basically the same thing. I'm partial to the Game Boy version because that's what I grew up playing. But they're both outstanding. It's an unofficial Mega Man game. the ending. <laughs> it always makes me laugh. Majestic hero rides off into the sunset. And that is Darkwing Duck for the Game Boy. Thanks for watching.